<laughs> Hi, I'm uh, it's Cap Captain Incredible. Uh, I'm just, I've decided to start uh, filming what, myself when I do things. Um, I'm, I make loads of crap, you know, like this kind of stuff, and I'll probably show some pictures and videos of the rubbish I've made. Uh, so, today um, I'm building uh, parts for a big installation with loads of solenoids that are going to be banging on shit on the wall and it's all going to be remote controlled and very cool, but to do that I'm going to need to control a lot of electromagnets and to control the electromagnets we're going to need a bunch of transistors. I don't know where my transistors are. Hopefully I'll find them. But luckily I've made circuit boards and with these circuit boards uh, I can just like put my components in here now and uh, solder it all up and then at the end of the day we'll have a finished circuit board. I'll probably show you a picture of a finished circuit board now. It's probably a good idea. That uh, will do the stuff that I want it to do. So uh, this is going to be really exciting to watch because I'm just basically going to be soldering. Probably, probably going to be a time lapse. Uh, so I need to just get started, I guess. <clears throat> you want to look closely, huh? You want a close look. So basically, what I'm doing now is I'm uh, just uh, getting all the resistors out and sticking them through the holes where they go. Not really soldering anything yet. I'm just kind of putting everything into place so that I can solder it all at once. Here's a pro tip. Uh, if you're gonna... If you wanna solder a lot of resistors, yeah, it's a good idea to kind of try and bend a lot of them at the same time. So I usually take four resistors like this and then I kind of just bend down like that and then I also kind of bend down like that so they're nice and bent into nice angles and that makes it a lot easier to stick them through these holes there and so on okay six we'll do for now uh, I think I'm just I'm gonna solder these now that's what I'm gonna do next so basically uh, I just start by going over and uh, soldering all the different uh, resistors one at a time uh, before I go over and cut all the leads with my uh, wire clippers at the end. It's always nice to have uh, one of these lying around, a CR2032 battery. Nice to have one of them because what you can do with these is uh, just make sure the LEDs are actually what you think they are. These are white LEDs. Good. This right here is Hobby Pearls, I reckon. We're gonna stick them on there, yeah? <gasps> like that, on the LED, Ah, huh? Can you see that? And that is gonna be cool, because then we can stick the LED through here, through that, like that, and it'll be standing up off the surface of the board. <clears throat> That's what that means, yeah? So let's fucking stick some of this crap on there. The LEDs on, circuit board with LEDs, lovely, they're all on. Now it's time for transistors. These are <clears throat> these are tip 120 transistors because they can put lots of current through without getting broken. I don't know if I've got enough, I'm not very good at counting, so let's just try.
turns out there was enough there was enough transistors uh, so I've got a bunch of these now uh, all I need to put on now is the terminals and some pin headers yeah so I think I'll do the pin headers first and then I'll do the terminals Is what these things are going to be doing. Um, I've got my, my lab power supply. I'm going to set it to uh, 12 volts, and then I've got these 12 volt DC solenoids. 12 volts DC. Brilliant. If I connect there, turn the power supply on. It works, but I want to be able to control it with this, don't I? What I'm trying to say here is that uh, I actually need to control these solenoids with a microcontroller and a microcontroller can't really output 12 volts on its pins uh, so I need to be able to control these 12 volts and the high current with some uh, lower voltage like 5 volts or 3 volts uh, and uh, some lower current so yeah. yeah. 3 volt battery, low current, I can control that. So, it works. So the next thing we've got to do, I've made all of these, bunch, a bunch of these things that are like, click 120s for turning the solenoids on and off, click, 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 you know, high current kind of stuff. And then, but to control all of those, uh, I'm going to use these uh, MCP23017, uh, which are like input output expander modules, I think they're called. Basically, I can talk uh, I2C with this. I can send information to this and make it turn on and off uh, different legs to control that. Uh, so I've also made a little circuit board for that one. Uh, this one's going to be a lot quicker to solder, but I also do need quite a lot of these, so I'm just going to solder a whole bunch. And uh, hopefully, oh, yeah, I'm going to put sockets on them as well. Uh, probably, I probably won't be taking any of the chips out ever, but I, I always do this. It's, it's nice to be able to, like, you know, pull the chip out, put it back in again. Yeah, it makes me feel safe. <clears throat> is I'm putting the chips into the sockets on these circuit boards. As you can see, there's a little indentation there on one side of the chip, and uh, that should line up with the uh, indentation on one side of the socket here. So, what I'm doing now is I'm putting jumpers on these address selectors, and they will be used to uh, choose what address the uh, input output expander uh, has on the I2C bus. Of course, the point of these address selectors is so that you can have uh, multiple uh, input output expanders on the same I2C bus and you can then talk to them differently, you can address them.
I've soldered all these circuit boards now, and they all they connect to each other. So basically, using uh, ribbon cables, these circuit boards right here, they connect to they connect to these circuit boards here. So the cable goes between them, and the one controls the other. Uh, we'll do a test of that afterwards. So. But we need something to control these circuit boards as well. Uh, so to control this uh, using I2C, we need a microcontroller. And for the microcontroller, we're going to use these. This is the Microbit microcontroller. And the reason I'm using these is because uh, they're really easy to program, especially for kids and people getting into code. You can program it using a block-based language. I'll show some videos of that, I guess, on the screen of like box. And of course, the whole point of the installation that we're making is uh, for kids and new beginners to be able to program these and control the uh, musical installation in the room. So it's very important that it's easy. Blocks moving around and stuff like that. <clears throat> but uh, we can't really connect that to this. We can't really connect these together very easily, can we? That's not going to work very well. Um, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to make a... Uh, I'm going to be using this circuit board, Micro Break, because with these... So the micro bit is going to stick into that connector there, that connector is going to be soldered onto here, and then using jumper cables, that's going to connect to this, and then this is going to control this, and then this is going to control the solenoids, the electromagnets, these things. Alright then, here's a pro tip, uh, if you've like spilled lots of solder in between, if you're really crap at soldering like me, you've got like a fat, fat fingers and a fat soldering iron, uh, and you spill solder in between lots of joints, that's called a short circuit, that is not good, it will work, it, it'll break it basically. Uh, so we need to get all that solder away that's in between all these spots, but because this is a circuit board, it has a solder mask on it, so uh, even though this is hot enough to like melt solder, it's like 350 degrees, it's not going to damage the circuit board. And in fact, uh, the circuit board is going to try and push away the solder, so all I need to do is melt this and move the soldering iron away, and the solder will come off. So here we are in the make code editor, we can see our little micro bit up there. Uh, what we want to do is we just want to make a really basic uh, program just to check that the I2C communication is working and that all the circuit boards are doing what they're supposed to do. I'm going to use uh, an extension that I've made earlier um, and I think to use this extension we first have to like set port as output. There we go. And also set port B as output like that and then uh, we want to make a variable called uh, increase like that and uh, we want to change that variable by one every time it goes through the loop and then that number we want to uh, output so we want to write number to port there we go and the number wants to be increase that copy paste <clears throat> well that'll do actually this should do uh, for a test so we'll just call it uh, I to C test and we'll press uh, download so once the code has been downloaded here to our uh, micro bit we can uh, unplug it and take it over here Plug it into our little test rig. Can we bring the microphone with me as well? And uh, there we go. It's starting to light up these LEDs. It's uh, a binary counter, is what this is called. And this shows us that the micro bit is managing to talk to the input output expander, and the input output expander is managing to talk to the uh, transistor array, I suppose you could call that. So what I've done now, right, is I've uh, taken this, uh, taken some 12 volts in these crocodile clips and put it into the 12 volt input on this circuit board. 
and then I'm gonna just use a USB cable, just plug it in there to give this some life. You can see it's making these LEDs blink, and uh, this one's blinking quite fast because that's like it's counting ones basically. Uh, and that's connected to the solenoid here now. So if I turn the 12 volt power supply on, I reckon. <laughs> Which is great because that means that means that I can now control I can control 16 uh, of these solenoids with one uh, microbit. In fact, actually, I can control as many as I want because I can daisy chain these uh, MCP 23017s and like have a buttload of them. But I think I'll probably be sticking to 16 at a time. Uh, yeah, right. not bad. It worked. <laughs> Well, that's the start, I guess. Uh, I mean, yeah, there, there it is. Uh, I'll be doing some more of these, I reckon. I'll be filming a bit of the stuff that I'm doing and uh, try to kind of document the stuff I do and uh, try to have some kind of interesting content there so you can maybe learn a bit about electronics, explain how components work or show a little bit of programming, coding, helping out, maybe even some tutorials. I, I have no idea. Really. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, I'm sitting in a room talking to the camera, which is great. Uh, so leave uh, leave a comment, I guess, maybe, if you've got like some brilliant idea about, you know, what I was dying up this is what I would do. Because, uh, yeah, I don't know. Let's, I mean, see what happens. Huh? I'm young. This, this can only be, can only go up from here, I reckon. Thanks. <laughs>